From the very beginning of modern psychology uh, with William James, the self was a really important concept. Um, in James's initial textbook, uh, he wrote um, close to, I think, 100 pages about how important the self was. Uh, and then uh, with the behavioral approach and psychoanalysis, um, this focus on the self started to disappear. Um, I think Allport uh, is quoted as um, saying something to the effect of the self has been, you know, all but lost to view. However, uh, you guys are living in a, in a day and age when the self has definitely come back into popularity. The humanistic perspective helped that a little bit, um, but with the emphasis on cognition and internal processes, uh, there's a lot now talking about how important the self is in terms of organizing everything about who we are. Uh, so to define what the self is, uh, it's assumed in contemporary psychology to really be the center of personality. Um, and so the self is this organizing uh, whole for our thoughts, our feelings, our actions. Uh, and so there's a lot of research that comes out nowadays um, about self-determination, about uh, self-motivation, about self-esteem, um, the different types of selves we can be. Uh, and so one of the really interesting uh, thoughts that's been proposed uh, comes courtesy of Hazel Marcus, uh, who talks a little bit about possible selves and how a really important motivating factor um, for achievement in our lives uh, are all of the possible selves that we envision uh, in our future. And this sort of, in, in some ways, relates back to uh, Karen Hornay's real self versus ideal self, except Marcus's research suggests we have all sorts of different possible selves. Um, we have those ideal selves, like all sorts of ideal selves of who we might want to become. Uh, we also have the selves um, that we, we don't want to be. Um, when we think of our future, uh, right now you probably have all sorts of different visions of what your future could be, um, whether it's you know a career like a doctor or a judge or an astronaut or an architect or a teacher or um, a politician. You have all these ideas of careers you could be or um, the type of person you could be. And I'm sure you also have fears of possible selves you could become, um, you know, unemployed or in a job you don't like or uh, lonely. And you have all of these different selves of um, possibility and also ones you want to avoid. And Marcus says that uh, these possible selves give us specific goals. Um, some research has suggested that students who are uh, part of combined undergrad and graduate programs end up doing better at an undergrad level. So you have some places you can go, and when you get accepted for your undergrad degree, you also are accepted to like a master's program or a grad program, whether it's a medical program um, or like a, a master's of ed program. And the kids are, or the, the, I guess you're young adults in those programs, oftentimes achieve better at the undergrad level. Um, and Marcus would explain this from the perspective, perspective of, they now have a specific goal they're working towards, and that can be very, very motivating. It can provide you with energy. And ultimately, it can lead, lead to achievement. Now, all of this focus on the self uh, can sometimes be problematic. Uh, and you've probably heard before of the spotlight effect. Um, Thomas Gilovich did uh, some really interesting research on this. Um, it's defined as um, our tendency to overestimate how much other people notice um, things about ourselves, uh, our appearance, uh, our performance, um, potentially our mistakes and our blunders and our flaws. Uh, it's called the spotlight effect because we we assume that there is this constant spotlight from other people on us. And Gilovich's research um, actually involved taking students from Cornell University and selecting uh, an individual in an experiment to go into a room full of his or her peers wearing uh, a potentially very embarrassing t-shirt. Uh, the t-shirt that Gilovich selected for his experiment was one with um, the, the one and only Barry Manilow, just like emblazoned right on it. And he asked the students to estimate what percentage of their, their peers would notice the t-shirt. Uh, and then he also, after the experiment was concluded, asked everybody else in the room uh, how if they had noticed the t-shirt or not. And so what he found was that uh, the individuals wearing the t-shirt estimated that about half of the people in the room would immediately, upon their entrance, notice the t-shirt. However, what the reality was, was only about 23% um, even noticed it at all. Uh, and so what this speaks to uh, is the fact 
that we tend to think there is the spotlight on us and that people are going to notice all of these things about what we do. Um, but the reality can be a little bit reassuring and empowering, um, which is that we definitely overestimate the extent to which people notice our appearance. Um, and this works in both ways, uh, noticing positive or negative appearance. Um, we overestimate the extent to which people notice whether we're, we're anxious about something, if we're irritated, irritated, if we're attracted to someone. Um, People also don't notice as much as we think they do, uh, how much all this stuff varies about us. Uh, we go through ups and downs. Some days we think we look better than other days or we think we perform better than other days. Um, other people aren't as tuned into that variability that we think they are. Uh, and this even extends to those really like big noticeable blunders. Um, you know, you trip and you drop all of your stuff in the cafeteria um, or <clears throat> you show up to school and you thought it was a dress down day, but it's it's not. Uh, these big mistakes, people don't notice as much as we think they do, and they certainly don't remember them as much as we think they do. Uh, so this can be, I think, really, really useful information to know, especially if you suffer um, from anxiety related to things like giving presentations in class. Um, people aren't paying as much attention uh, to, to these things as we think that they are.